Hi, I'm Professor Michelle Barber. Welcome to the Enterprise Sessions. Today, I'm talking to Amber Proben, the co-founder of Pequel. Welcome, Amber. Thank you so much for making time to speak with us today. Thank you very much for having me on. So let's start by setting the scene. Can you tell me a bit about Pequel? Yes, I would love to. So Pequel started in mine and Hazel, my co-founders, master's year at Bristol University. It sort of was a coupled with the university tasking us to solve a real world problem. And we thought about what is a problem that we think have in our own lives. And over the summer, me and Hazel had been working at festivals and in our breaks, we'd have to choose between going to the toilet or getting food just because the queues for the toilets were too long. We've had that frustration of saying, why isn't there something else? So in this fourth year master's project, we thought, right, this is something that we can tackle and we can actually solve. So Pequel is the UK's first standalone or freestanding women's urinal. It's safe, so it's not just sort of well lit and in a private area, but it means that women aren't leaving the toilet queue and going off and potentially um, being assaulted, which has happened, especially at festival sites. And it's sustainable because we're using biopolymers and sea plastics to build this. So all of these things attribute to a better experience at festivals for users and our customers. I think that's incredible. And you've come such a long way in such a short period of time. But there must have been some tricky parts. There must have been some parts, some, something you encountered that was, that was difficult. Um, what were the tricky bears? What comes straight to my mind is when we were raising investment. We had won competitions and won grants up to that point that kept us afloat. But we were running out of money and we really needed to start manufacturing the product. So I think we were like focused on getting this investment, but we were hitting barriers in that, in that path. You know, we were hitting being young female founders. We were hitting people not believing us or not thinking that we were worth that valuation. So yeah, it was definitely a lot of hoops to jump through, but we found the right investors who believed in us, who sort of see us as credible humans and yeah want us to succeed and yourself and your co-founder hazel are obviously extremely driven and very agile people but you must need support from somewhere where where do, where have you needed support and then where have you found that support because it started out as a student project we were sort of surrounded by our academic professors a lot of those people are in startups of their own or they have they're doing academia with their own business so they could relate really closely. They also advised us to go on accelerators. So we went on Set Squared Accelerator back her business. That was where we were meeting with other female founders, where we were meeting with guest speakers and sort of mentors to help guide our development, even though we were miles apart. So that was really helpful. Fantastic. I mean, I know through reading about you in the press, you've had some amazing investment success recently. With investment success, it inevitably becomes investment failure. There will some people that will say no. Mm. How have you coped with that? Those, mm. those sometimes rather blunt, no, I'm not interested, I don't believe in your business. Yeah, I think we have definitely had our fair share. I think someone said to me that your investor relationships uh, last longer than most marriages nowadays. So like, <laughs> if you're not hitting it off, if you don't come together on like a shared mission there's no point pursuing it so I think I think back to a lot of investors that we've spoken to that have said no and actually it was blessing in disguise it was like actually we wouldn't have wanted them to be breathing down our neck or we wouldn't want them to be changing the direction of our business me and Hazel I'm so glad we're a pair because you bring each other up it's like when someone's feeling quite low and they need a bit more encouragement you can step in and be that for them so I think it's a bit of being self-independent and self-resilient, but also seeing when you need to step in for someone else. Mm. Clearly a very strong partnership. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if you're aware, but the uh, extent and success of student and graduate startups from Bristol has skyrocketed in the last couple of mm. years, something like a six-fold increase in investment in just one year. Mm. And you're right at the very front of that. What do you attribute that to? Why do you think that is? Well, I was part of the first year that the Centre for Innovation at Bristol University mm -hmm. began. Um, and I think that is quite significant to attribute all this sort of success to. Like their, their way of teaching is revolutionary. You know, they've won awards for it. And they ask the students, what is it that you want more of? Let's fit around what your requirements are rather than you have to fit into this traditional mould that we think is beneficial. So I think that that kind of 
ecosystem creates people who are willing to take more risks, who are willing to have more hard conversations. And so the setups like client brief, client briefs that you had in our second and third year meant you had experience before you graduated in real world businesses. So I think, I think that that's a brilliant course. I wish it had existed when I was a student, absolutely. So what does the future hold for Pequal? What, what are the big challenges, big opportunities on the horizon for you? Ooh, uh, there's so many. <laughs> I'm sure. so, so we're manufacturing the product right now. Mm -hmm. That's in Somerset, so really local. And then by June, we'll be launching our uh, products for the first time. So we're in Bristol actually for our first ever launch and that will be Love Saves the Day. Amazing. And then we're at Glastonbury. So we're going to go to the most influential mm. events possible and showcase our product. So this year is all about showcasing and all about collecting data and evidencing the product and then being able to use that for our other customers later down the line. So people can use the female urinal at Glastonbury, or they're just going to look at it and give you yeah, feedback? They'll, be able they'll to actually use be it. using yeah. it. That's so amazing. last year, we built a working prototype mm -hmm. where people can use them. But this year is more refined. This is actually the final product now. But yeah, there will be working urinals that women can use, get out of the long cross-legged mm -hmm. queue and back to the event that they've paid for. So we've had global demand from New Zealand, from um, South Korea, Australia, the US, France. It just keeps going that people want these women's urinals out there. Yeah, we, we're really ready to scale up. And in the future, we want to be accessible to fixed sites and also the relief sector. Mm -hmm. So fixed sites would be like shopping centres, airports. And then for the relief sector, we want to um, adapt the design to be effective in places like refugee camps mm -hmm. or short-term aid for natural disasters, you know, things like that, which we feel like we really want to contribute to. And I suppose to turn that then backwards, if there was something you could tell your, your younger self when you started out on this journey, mm -hmm. is there something you know now that you would have liked to have known then or think that your journey might have been smoother if you'd known then? Overall, probably just believe more in ourselves mm -hmm. and our abilities. We looked to uh, lots of people for advice and after a long time, after hearing everyone and taking everyone's advice on, we realised that we were being sort of pushed in lots of different directions when actually we knew what we wanted to do. And so we basically filtered out the BS <laughs> and we're like, okay, thank you for that opinion. That's not quite in line with what we want to achieve. Um, so we're going to say no to that. I think just this belief and value in ourselves as founders, as capable beings, mm -hmm. being able to, you know, we've, we've made this so far. Why, why can't we do this next step? Why can't we get this investment? Why can't we go global? So I would say to my younger, younger self, keep being explorative, keep being adventurous, uh, keep having fun. Too often nowadays, we're too quick to become adults and sap the fun out of mm. things. And I hope our business is gonna be fun forever. I'm so glad you say fun. I think that's yeah. a really key part of journeys yeah. like this, is yes, it's hard work. Yes, you can face rejection and frustration, mm. but it's fun. There are highs and lows for sure. Mm. But yeah, you've got to love what you do. So right now we say, excuse me, I'm just going to the toilet. Do you think in the future we'll say, excuse me, I'm just going to the peak world? Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, that would be amazing. We've got lots of sort of sayings right now, like squat, not stand for peer quality or things like that. <laughs> I love it, brilliant. Thank you so much, Amber, for sharing your experiences with us. I'm really sure that your, your insights and your thoughts are gonna be very useful for other aspiring founders. We really appreciate your time, thank, thank you. Thank you. If something you've heard about today has piqued your interest and you'd like to know more or discuss your own enterprise ideas with us, then please do get in touch and enjoy the rest of the enterprise sessions.